AstraZeneca vaccines have finally arrived in Malaysia, but is it safe? We've seen a lot of questions like uh, what vaccines are available? How do you register? When can you get a vaccine? And what's the difference between booster and third dose? What happens if you completed your vaccination program? And yes, in case you're wondering, I just received my first AstraZeneca vaccine jab. Phase 3 of the National Immunization Program, which covers all adults below 60 years old, have finally begun in the Klang Valley. All remaining adults below 60 years old in Kel and Slango can walk in to get their COVID-19 vaccination. If you've gotten a two-dose vaccine such as AstraZeneca, Pfizer or Sinovac, you're only considered fully vaccinated 14 days after getting the second dose. That's why you must also follow the SOP including wearing a face mask and to social distance even after you're fully vaccinated. The National Immunization Program has achieved a new milestone as 70% of Malaysia's total population have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Hello everybody, this is Alex from SoyaChincha.com and this is a COVID-19 Vaccine Malaysia update. This is a weekly show where we recap the latest developments of the COVID-19 vaccine as well as the National Immunization Program. Just a friendly reminder that this update is also available in Bahasa Melayu. And you can check it out on the Soya Chincha BM channel by clicking on the pop-up above or click on the link in the description box below. Sinovac is starting phase 3 trials for children below 12 years old in Malaysia and how do you fix the vaccine certificate issue in My Sejahtera? And apparently, there are more COVID-19 deaths among the fully vaccinated. So does the vaccine work? This and more in this week's episode. Before we begin, here are some highlighted comments from the previous video. LOL said, Hello, I'm an international student in Malaysia and got fully vaccinated a month ago. I was wondering if I would be able to go back to my home country for vacation and then come back without going through the quarantine. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the comment. The freedom to travel overseas for leisure purposes is only given to fully vaccinated Malaysians and they are also exempted from applying the My Travel Pass. At the moment, incoming travellers, regardless of vaccination status, are required to undergo mandatory quarantine upon entering Malaysia. There's now a pilot test and release program, but it's only applicable for selected individuals, including rulers, ministers, members of parliament, state escorts, and government officials. Next, we have Andre Li Ning. I'm a 12 year old teen that got Sinovac. I could not take Pfizer due to allergies. Does that mean that my booster will be Sinovac? Hi, Andre. If you can't get the Pfizer vaccine due to health or allergy reasons, you will be offered an alternative vaccine, which includes Sinovac, for your booster shot. Next, we have Cho Yu Lun. Ethiopia have 33 deaths per 1 million population with a vaccination rate of 0.9%. Malaysia have 858 deaths per 1 million population with a vaccination rate of 70%. If vaccination works, then why Malaysia have more deaths compared to Ethiopia? Hi Chow Yu Lun, thanks for the comment and that's a great question. And if you actually zoom out, you notice that Africa have fewer COVID-19 cases and deaths compared to other continents around the world. And this is partly due to the demographics. As you know, senior citizens and people with comorbidities have a higher risk of deaths due to COVID-19. If you look at most African nations, except probably for South Africa, the median age is mostly below 20 years old, which means that a significant portion of the population are young. In Ethiopia, the median age is 19.5, and in Malaysia, the median age is 29.6 years. Continue watching as we'll cover the COVID-19 deaths among the fully vaccinated and unvaccinated in Malaysia. Health Minister Kari Jamaluddin has announced last week that individuals who are fully vaccinated with Sinovac will receive Pfizer as their booster shot. This will begin with senior citizens aged 60 years old and above. The Pfizer booster for Sinovac recipients will be administered three months after receiving the second dose. As a comparison, individuals who are fully vaccinated with Pfizer will get the booster shot six months after receiving the second dose. This also marks the first mix and match COVID-19 vaccinations in Malaysia and the booster shots are offered for free and is also offered voluntarily. Eligible individuals for the booster shot will be informed about their appointment through MySejahtera or by SMS. Are you fully vaccinated against COVID-19 but still haven't received the digital certificate? MySejahtera has provided several steps to solve this issue. According to MySejahtera, most of these issues are due to incomplete verification. If you haven't verified your details, launch the MySejahtera app, go to the homepage, tap on COVID-19 vaccination. From there, you should see a vaccination verification page and make sure all your details including your IC and passport number is correct. 
The next possible reason is that you might be registered as a dependent under a different MySignature account. To solve this issue, you need to remove yourself as a dependent in order for the vaccine certificate to be displayed in your personal MySignature account. Just go to the person's MySignature account, go to the homepage and then tap on COVID-19 vaccination. From there, tap on Add Vaccine Certificate and remove your name by clicking on the link. Once that's done, you can register your own MySignature account and verify your details. Take note that the vaccine certificate is tied to your IC or passport number. If you still can't get your vaccine certificate after these steps, you can contact the MySignature help desk and select M. I've been vaccinated but my digital certificate is missing. Malaysia has been selected as one of the countries to conduct phase 3 trials for Sinovac vaccines for children aged between 3 to 11 years old. This will be conducted at 10 facilities including 8 under the Ministry of Health as well as University Malaya and University Technology Mara. The Sinovac vaccine is currently authorised in Malaysia to vaccinate children aged 12 years old and above. Under the teen vaccination program, Sinovac is offered for teens who have allergies or can't take Pfizer due to health reasons. In less than two months, Malaysia has vaccinated over 80% of its teen population with at least one dose. According to Health Minister Khairi Jamaluddin, this is one of the fastest teen vaccinations in the world. As of 26 October, almost 2.6 million teens have received at least one dose, which is 82%. Meanwhile, over 1.8 million teens, or 58.8%, have been fully vaccinated with two doses. As Malaysia lifts more restrictions and new COVID-19 cases have gradually gone down, Iran is reminded to adhere to the SOP and not to be complacent to avoid another spike of infections. Health Minister Khairi Jamaluddin has issued a reminder for people dining in. He urged everyone to put on their face masks after eating. He said his ministry has seen a lot of examples of people talking after eating without wearing a face mask. The Ministry of Health has also reminded that the smoking ban is still enforced in all restaurants and eateries, so think twice before lighting up. Recently, there are people pointing out that there are more COVID-19 deaths among the fully vaccinated versus people who are not vaccinated, and some raise concerns, is this a sign that vaccines are not working? According to COVID Now, 45.2% of COVID deaths in the last two weeks are unvaccinated, 8.3% are partially vaccinated, and 46.5% are fully vaccinated. Based on this, some concluded that vaccinations don't make a difference, but we need to look at the bigger picture. If you look at the age group, 76% of the total COVID deaths are seen in citizens above 60 years old, 23.4% are between 18 to 59 years old, and deaths among children below 18 is about 0.5%, which means that 99% of deaths are among adults. If you look at the vaccination progress for adults, 94.8% have been fully vaccinated, 2.7% are partially vaccinated, and 4.6% are not vaccinated. So if you go back and compare, there are 373 deaths among 22 million fully vaccinated adults in the last two weeks. And there are 363 deaths among 1 million non-vaccinated adults in Malaysia. That closely showed that the risk of deaths due to COVID is higher if you're not vaccinated. After most people have been fully vaccinated, we are seeing a downward trend in Malaysia for new cases, ICU cases, ventilation use, and even deaths. If you want to learn more, you can check it out yourself on the COVID Now website. The Ministry of Health has also shared more raw data, including line lists of death and also adverse effects of vaccines on GitHub. We provide the link in the description box below. That's all folks, this is the final episode of the COVID-19 Vaccine Malaysia Update series. We'd like to thank you all for your support, your comments and your feedback they have given us so far. You've been an awesome audience and we are glad that this has been helpful in keeping you informed about the COVID-19 vaccination program. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, like us on Facebook and don't forget to subscribe us on your YouTube channel and hit the notification bell icon so that you'll be informed of our future videos. And guess what? We are also available on TikTok. Remember guys, we are still not out of the woods yet so please take all necessary precautions to keep yourself safe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!